When it comes to drawing and inventory, there's so many different kinds, right? It's really hard to pin down what you want in your game because there's so much variety in what you can offer. And that's kind of the fun of it, right? It's kind of like painting or drawing. You kind of have fun setting it up yourself and making it look however you want. And in my last video, I showed you how to actually create an inventory system. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up one pretty fast that's pretty basic. And you'll notice at the top of my screen here, I have a simple little inventory here. It holds 12 slots. And when I go and collect these blue gems, well, you'll see that it populates with the sprite icon, a little label of what the name is, and then how many we have in our inventory. And so I can stack these and you'll see that the number increases and I can even add a different item type and you'll see as I pick it up that it goes into its own slot with its own stack. So let's take a look at what I have set up for a UI. So I have this inventory panel game object here, right? And to do that, I right clicked on my hard key and I went to UI and I just created an image and it just gives you a square. I made it like brown and then I set its width and height 1330 by 120, but I want to say up front, creating a UI is very custom to what you want it to look like. You'll have to have fun doing it yourself. You don't have to match mine exactly. In fact, I highly encourage you to do it yourself because I just made a quick, dumb example just to show you guys. But part of the fun of doing this is to do it yourself anyway. Okay, but on our panel, it's just an image right now with no sprite, right? So it's colored brown. And then you'll see here, I added this grid layout group component. Just hit add component and you can find it. I have my cell size to 100 by 100. I have the spacing set from 10 in the X, 10 in the Y. And technically with the grid layout, you can have multiple rows of this. So if you look at it now, in the future, let's say you wanted to have two rows of inventory or three or four, the grid layout would support that. But I'm just gonna keep it constrained at 12. 12 items in a single row. So in my padding, I just have 10 in all four so that you have a little bit of room on the sides. And because I set the width to 1330 and I set the padding to 10 and I have spacing in the X to 10, I know for a fact that with these inventory slot game objects I have, and I'll show you them in one second, but I know for sure I can make up to 12 of these and they'll fit perfect. And if I make more, well, then they'll kind of go down and I'll have to readjust the base, but I'm going to cap things off at 12. Anyway, so this is the full configuration I have for my grid layout. And then I also have a script I made called Inventory Manager, and I attach it to this. We're gonna write this from scratch in a second here, so don't worry about what's in it yet. Ignore the contents of this, but you can make like a script on here that's gonna basically manage all your slots, right? And now let's actually go into an individual inventory slot. So to make this slot, what I did was I right-clicked on my inventory panel, I went to UI again, and I went to Image. And when you do that, you'll get a white square that looks like this. And then I just played around with the color until I found one that, you know, looks fine. I'm not too worried about it. So it's literally just a image with no sprite and a color. So you get a square and this represents the entire slot. I then put on this layout element component and this is what's gonna play with our grid layout group. These kind of work together in synergy. So on our inventory panel, we have a grid layout group and then on each individual slot, we have a layout element and this kind of configures how the elements are gonna be displayed. And so I actually left all of the settings on my layout element defaulted. And without doing anything else, if you just click on your slot and you duplicate it, so they're still you know, nested under the inventory panel, you should see them generate in the direction you want. And at this point, you can kind of test things out and make a bunch of them and see if it looks good. So this slot, I made a prefab. And then how we actually put data like this icon or the stack size or the name is on the slot. I right clicked and I created another UI image, called it icon. Just for testing, I gave it the gem icon to you know see how the proportions would look. And I resized it and stuff like that. Um, but this could really be anything, right? Like I could switch this to book because for the prefab, this can just be set up, you know, for styling. And when we actually run the game and this is being updated live, well, it's gonna be pulling the item data from our scriptable objects we set up last video. And it's gonna be reading whatever the icon is off that. So even though I'm showing a book here, it's not actually gonna show this in game until you pick up a book, I guess. So feel free to use a sprite and get things to look right. And then feel free to try a couple different ones. Like I can go from the book to the gem and you know, I think the size looks pretty good there for two different sprites. I created another image on my slot called label. 
And this is just like a bar. It's just a gray bar so we can read text a little bit easier. Underneath that, I have a TextMesh Pro text. And right now I just have it testing with BlueGem. Uh, and then I also have another TextMesh Pro underneath slot that's just gonna handle numbers. So I probably won't have more than say like 99. And so right now there's actually bad constraints. If you need three digits, it's just gonna go underneath it. But these are all things you can configure yourself. This looks fine. So what we'll actually do in the game is when we have an empty slot, so I can go to like this icon image, and when we actually play the game, I can disable this image component. You'll see it disappears. And I'm doing the same with the Text Mesh Pro components on the label text and the stack size text. And so when we start the game, we have 12 of these slots displayed. And so what's gonna be happening is our inventory manager is going to create 12 slots. It's gonna be managing these slots. And then whenever there's any change in our inventory, we're just gonna be pulling the data from that list and then updating our slots to display that information. So the last thing I'll mention is on every single one of these slots, we have an inventory slot script. And again, we'll write this from scratch. So we'll see how that works, uh, I guess right now. But take the time to style this, use some mock data and mock images, mock text, see how the proportions are, set some constraints and see if you like it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our inventory slot script. I emptied it out. This is gonna be a mono behavior because we're actually attaching it to the slot game objects, right, in our UI. At the top, I added using TM Pro, which lets us use TextMesh Pro. And then I also added using UnityEngine.UI up here so that we can reference images. And that's actually the first thing we'll do. We'll create the variables we're gonna need. So we need a reference to our public image icon. We need a reference to our public text mesh pro UGUI, and this is gonna be label text, right? So we can write like the name of the item. And then we need a public text mesh pro UGUI, and we'll call this stack size text. So we know how many are in the stack. If you don't do stacks in your game, obviously don't make this text object. Okay, and then we need two methods. Let's start with a simple one. We'll say public void clear slot. And we're just gonna set each of these three components to disabled. So I'll say icon.enabled equals false. I'll say label text dot enabled equals false. Stack size text dot enabled equals false. So in clear slot, we just wanna take these three variables we just made and set enabled to false. Then we wanna make a public void draw slot method. And for an argument, we wanna take in a inventory item because we're gonna need all the data to pull off of this and then just display it. And as a refresher in here, we have stack size, display name, and icon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is say if item is equal to null, just in case we're passing in a null item for some reason, then we'll clear the slot and return. Otherwise, well, we wanna re-enable these three. So you could make another method if you want, that's a cleaner way of doing it, but I'm not going to, I'm lazy. So we could set all of them back to true in case they were already set to false. And this time we want to actually update the data. So we could say icon.sprite is equal to item dot item data dot icon. We could say label text dot text is equal to item dot item data dot display name. And then we could say stack size text is equal to item dot stack size, which is an integer dot to string. Stack size text dot text. There you go, right? So it's, this is very simple. We're literally just enabling it, which is one way of handling it. And then we're just setting the data to the appropriate fields. Super basic, that's all we need to do in this inventory slot. It's just gonna know how to set itself, whether there's an item or not. Okay, and then on this inventory panel, again, I'll mention it, I have an inventory manager script. Let's open that up. And so in here, there's two things the inventory manager really needs to know how to do. It needs a reference to our slot prefab. So we'll say public game object slot prefab. We need a public list of inventory slot, call this inventory slots, instantiate this to a new list of inventory slots with the capacity of 12. Because I only want to make 12 of these just in my example, but this doesn't have to be what you do. Okay, so then the first method we want to do is to be able to reset our inventory back to zero. So for that, what we could say is void reset inventory. And how we have it set up, right, is that all these slots are a child of our inventory panel. And so what we can do to delete all of those, if we wanted to do that, is say for each transform, and I'll call this child transform, in transform, which is kind of weird to read, but we're basically just saying get every child game object that's found underneath our inventory panel. And this allows us to say destroy child transform dot 
game object. And this will basically delete all the slots we have created. And then after we do that, we just want to say inventory slots equals new list of inventory slots 12. You could also clear it. But we're basically just going to reset the list and destroy everything. And so that's how we reset our inventory. And why we're doing this is because when I basically have a change in my inventory, I'm going to fire an event and then I'm going to wipe our inventory clean and regenerate it, which is not efficient. I'll say it up front. There is 100% better ways of doing it. But is this catastrophic? No, we have 12 slots I'm displaying here. It's not a big deal. The fact we have to do this, it's going to be instant. Yeah, there's better ways of doing it. I don't care. The downside to this approach is every time we have a change, even if we're just increasing the stack size by one of the same object, well, then we have to destroy everything and regenerate all 12 slots and update them. And that's a lot of, you know, wasted work. But the advantage to this is it actually is like a catch all because regardless of if we're doing, you know, an increase to the stack size or we picked up a new item or we've removed an item, it's just going to handle all of those cases in a single method. And that's totally what I want. I don't care. If this was a bigger inventory, I would be more concerned about it, but I'm not. And if you are, then you can, you know, refactor it. So with that said, let's actually make a draw inventory method. I'll say void draw inventory. And then to draw an inventory, we need a list of our inventory items. So I'll call this our inventory. And so the first thing I want to do is reset our inventory so that we're starting fresh. And then I'm going to have two for loops here. I'm going to say for int i equals zero. i is less than the inventory slots list dot capacity, not count. So when we actually create this list here, it's not gonna have a count in it. There's nothing that's actually within this list yet, but we know that it can only have 12 at the most, and that's the capacity. So after that, I'll say I plus plus. And what we basically wanna do here is create the 12 slots. So really quick underneath this, we'll make another new method, and I'll say void create inventory slot. And in here, it's pretty simple. Using our slot prefab variable, we want to instantiate a new slot. So I'll say game object to slot equals instantiate slot prefab. We then want to make sure that this slot game object we just created is going to be nested underneath our inventory panel as a child. For that, we'll say new slot dot transform dot set parent is equal to, you know, this transform of the inventory panel. And for the position we say false because it's going to be updating itself. We then want to actually get the inventory slot component off of this new instantiated prefab. So I'll say inventory slot new slot component is equal to the new slot dot get component of type inventory slot. And then after we create it, if it's a brand new slot, it would make sense for us to kind of clear it and make sure it's, you know, empty. So we'll say new slot component dot clear slot. And then we just want to add this to our list in the manager. So we'll say inventory slots dot add new slot component, right? So these five lines of codes, all we're going to need to create a new slot back in our draw inventory. I'll say create inventory slot. And this is going to create 12 empty inventory slots, right? It's going to look just like this. Okay, so now that we have 12 slots that are empty, we want to actually update all of our slots based on the inventory we passed in. For this, I'll make another for loop and say for int i equals zero, i is less than inventory dot count i plus plus. And in here, all we're trying to do is basically update our inventory slots with the data found in our passed in inventory, right? So we could say inventory slots at the index of the loop dot draw slot. And this takes an inventory item which we have a list of here. So I'll say inventory at the same index. Okay, and that's it. We're done with our manager. And so there's one caveat here I need to bring up and it's a little bit lazy on my part, but you see I have this inventory here and if you've been following my tutorials, then you probably have this set up as well. Uh, and so right now, back in our inventory script that we set up last tutorial, and here we have this public list inventory, which we're gonna be passing in basically. And you'll see that right now there is no capacity set to this. So you can basically have hundreds of items in here theoretically. Back in our UI manager, if you have an inventory with a count of like 100 or even 13, once you get to that 13th one, it's gonna error out here because we only have a capacity of 12. Maybe you have some sort of dynamic capacity created here that you can pass you know, back and forth. Um, and then whenever you're adding, you basically wanna do a check to see if you're gonna be over that capacity or if you're at capacity and then refuse to add it. 
But I'm leaving that up to you. I think that's actually a fun challenge to figure out. Anyway, so one last time I'll reiterate over this. We're going to clear our inventory. So it's just gonna be the panel with no slots underneath it. We're going to create 12 empty slots, which is just what I want. Set it up however you want. And then after we've created 12 slots, we wanna just loop through the inventory that's been passed in and then tell each slot to update accordingly. So coming to the inventory script that we set up last tutorial, what's going to be new in this script? Well, I created this public static event that has an action delegate of type list of inventory items, right? I talked about events and delegates last episode and I called it on inventory change. This action could also be a delegate you set up. However, your game is structured. Feel free to make it work for that. And so we want to fire this event whenever there's a change in the inventory, obviously, based on its name. And you'll notice we need to pass in a list of inventory items, which we have right here. We have a public list of inventory item called inventory on this script. That's what we're gonna be passing in. And going back to our inventory manager where we actually you know, draw our inventory out, well, it takes a list of inventory items. So that's how everything's gonna line up. So where do we actually want to fire this uninventory change event? Well, it makes the most sense to do it when we add something to the inventory or when we remove something from the inventory. And so we only wanna fire it and add when it actually has successfully either increased the stack or just created a new object in our inventory. So we don't wanna have it like outside of our if block down here. So only when we successfully increase the stack or create a new item, we just wanna say on inventory change, question mark, right? So we know the event has some listeners. And then we say dot invoke and pass in our inventory, which is again, a list of inventory items. For remove, same deal. We wanna check to see if we're actually, you know, removing something successfully. And if we are, well, then we wanna fire the event. Okay, so at this point we have an event created in our inventory and it's firing when we make a change. We can go back to our inventory manager now and say on enable, and we need to register to this event. So I'll say inventory dot on inventory changed plus equals draw inventory. And then we need to do the same thing for on disable, except we unsubscribe the event. And a big reason we do this is because it's a static event, right? So the garbage collector is never going to actually clean this event up really. Um, so when you're like changing scenes and stuff like that, you can kind of have issues that way. So you just wanna make sure that you're actually subscribing and unsubscribing every time the components gets enabled or disabled. It just is a safeguard against that. Okay, so I know that was a lot of code to cover, and some of it is a little complicated, especially for new programmers, but at the end of the day, it's just a handful of methods and an event that we're adding here. And it's pretty straightforward. We're literally just regenerating our inventory every time. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, definitely comment below. The last thing we need to do is I'm going to double click on my slot prefab down here. And you'll see it opens this prefab window. So make sure you're in this. And then on my slot, I just wanna make sure I drag in the icon, the label text and the stack size text into these public fields. And then in your hierarchy, make sure any existing slots have those wired up as well. On your inventory panel, we have our manager and we need to put in our slot prefab. So make sure that's wired up as well. And now after all that work, we should now be able to collide with our objects. It'll increase the stack. And when we walk into a new type of object, well, it'll do the same thing. Again, you should be able to fill this up at your leisure. And so this is a simple example of an inventory UI. You can now expand this out on these slots by you know, registering mouse events on it, or if you're using a controller, you'll have to have some sort of way to interact with this. So you can like remove stuff or show a tooltip. But again, a lot of this is how you want your game to play out, what your UI and UX for your particular game is going to be. This is just one simple way to interact with our inventory through an event and display some data. So I hope you enjoyed. Comment down below ways you like to handle this, or if you think my way sucks, or if you have a better way. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to engage. Like the video if it helped you out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.